So I'm currently studying a master's in international development in the UK. And this comes after a transition from the oil and gas industry for eight years. So I've, I've made this leap to study and pursue a new yeah, a new career, a new life. But it's great. It, I'm, I'm so I'm so happy I've made this decision to, to learn. And I have no idea actually what I'm going to do after this. <laughs> but I know that I'm I'm on the right path. I've gone into this study without necessarily having a five year plan. I don't believe in five year plans. I believe in taking small steps and letting the rest unfold. And as you go through that period of inquiry throughout your life, things come to you. So I don't know what the future holds. I don't know what the future looks like. <laughs> I know there'll be challenges. I know it's completely uncertain, um, but it's so exciting at the same time. The decision to change from engineering and move into this international development sector, it was not a quick process. It, it took me two and, two and a half to three years between leaving to now being on the course. Now look back on, answers do not come quickly. So when I made that decision to leave, and that was not a quick decision because that had taken me uh, years of ignoring my inner kind of intuition, knowing that there is something greater out there and not greater in terms of better than other people, but more me, meant for me. I knew it, but I didn't want to listen to it. And so I just sort of suppressed it. So that those years finally built up into this, I've got to leave. I have to leave for my own well-being. At the age of 30, I ended up back at my parents. I was so lost and very unhappy. Uh, very sad actually it was a very difficult time in my life but i look back on it now and see how beautiful it was at the same time i i basically i opened up a piece of uh, a book to start journaling all my ideas of what i wanted to do in my life and i stared at a blank piece of paper for days. <laughs> it was days of, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what my interests are. I don't know where my passions are. And, and it, that was the one of the saddest times in my life, I think, because I just had no vision. I had no, no sense of who I was, but I started building up slowly and it was really slowly. And I started saying, well, okay, what have I been interested in the past? What, what was I interested as, in as a child? And I started writing ideas down. Um, what have I done in my past? That might also be in, you know, a, a point of inquiry, a point of insight. I've, I've followed these things. Why? And slowly I started building up these, I, you know, these ideas of, and not, not career, just in life. What am I interested in this world? There is, I've always been interested in travel. Okay. So travel where, um, and why is it culture? Is it animals? Is it landscape? And slowly I built up this, yeah, this list and I put it away and completely forgot that I'd written about it. I continued with my journaling and my reflection, you know, my, my past decision-making, why I went into engineering, what made me choose that. I recognized I could see a pattern. I chose engineering because I wanted, I really wanted to see the connection between building and, and sort of nature and helping people through building infrastructure and wells and irrigation systems. I kind of go back to this root of people and helping people and nature become the best versions of themselves, give people opportunity and freedoms to make choices. This continual reflection about my past, about the passions that I have, and then taking small steps to go and achieve those, you know, those interests that I have. And I don't mean big achievements, but small things like I'm interested in that book, I'll read it. All of that built up a more of a map for me to follow. And it's interesting because a year and a half after I wrote that list, I found that list and I realized that actually achieved 75 percent of the that blew my mind because that was my life list and within a year and a half i'd already done 75 percent of it <laughs> so it's definitely a, it's given me opportunity to be more free and to be more vocal about okay well i'm interested in this now and it might be wild but you know what it sure surely comes along so it has not been quick but it's it's come <laughs> Now
naturally I'm more um, inquisitive or curious about people and their story. So in every interaction that I have, I tend to think we're, it's an exchange here and we've got an opportunity to learn. And so through the most conversations, there's an opportunity to, you know, oh, hang on, I hadn't thought about that before, either in the world or about myself. I never really considered this before in my, in my own truth or my own story. They are both a source of knowledge and a source of inspiration. And you know, when you look for role models, I think sometimes the role models are best to the ones you'd never meet. <laughs> <laughs> I would have three values. Well, there's more, <laughs> but three core values. Uh, the first one is curiosity. And I am deeply curious about this world, about people, about nature, about our behaviors and our purpose and where we're going, um, where I'm going. Curiosity is, is a pursuit of learning more. Humility is, is so important. I, I think it's, it's this understanding that we fit into a bigger scheme, that our own self-importance is, is within, within a much bigger world. <laughs> and I alone am not particularly important, but as, a, as I contribute, what I'm working towards is, is building something more, something greater. And I get the sense of humility a lot that I know very little. <laughs> and I think that then drives my curiosity. But courage is also, I, I, I value people who are courageous and who are able to have the hard and difficult conversations and who are able to go and challenge themselves and take themselves out of the comfort zone and to, to be able to become a better version of themselves and, and to do some really courageous things in the world. I value that. And so that for me is something I try and lead myself with and take courageous steps out of my comfort zone. I don't know where the where the value of service came from for me. I think I don't know whether it's innate, whether we're born with it. Um, I, I think we probably are. I think we're all we all find ourselves. I think it was a Rumi quote, wasn't it? Who who said we find ourselves in in the pursuit of service. I, I believe that. I feel that. I I grew up. You know, I was, I've been very fortunate. I grew up in an extremely loving family, um, very loving parents who gave me opportunities to do. Not whatever I wanted, but certainly <laughs> the 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 chance to become who I wanted to be, and they they encouraged that. This and why doesn't everybody have this? Why do I don't? Yeah, why should we in the UK have it, and not other people? Or and, and in the UK, it's there's a big spread as well of inequality. So why 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 me? Service is incredibly important, and I think when I was in engineering. What made me realize, or what made me quite uncomfortable with the work I was doing was because I wasn't connected to what I was serving. I didn't know what I was serving other than my bank balance, perhaps. <laughs> um, and of course, you know, we did some really great work, but I wasn't in pursuit of service. And so I think fundamentally that's why I had to make that shift because it, it was actually, it was hurting me in the end. I'm really interested in this idea of the infinite versus the finite game. Um, the finite game being based on kind of black and white, winning, losing, always in pursuit of that goal. And, and typically, you know, companies or people can be very focused on pursuing financial status um, or even position status, power. Whereas the finite game is about being in the game. And the game of life but that is a it's a it's a kind of a game changer because you you realize that you're in pursuit of something much greater that your pursuit you're in pursuit of the journey and the betterment of of where we're going there's a legacy element to it and i love this it's not about me and my material gain right now it's a much longer term game of the future whether it's my future or somebody else's and um, and that's really helped drive me now is that I'm not in pursuit of money. Um, I'm in pursuit of legacy of the world and purpose. Mm -hmm. 
I've been aware of EBBF for probably around well, over a year now through friends who said, Emily, I think this is something that you need to, to be aware of. In May, when I went to the first conference, to, to my first conference on success, I didn't know what to expect. I was quite nervous. I didn't know. It, I'd been outside of out of the workplace for a, quite some time at this point. And so I felt nervous about stepping in and I don't know, what am I going to learn? Am I able to contribute? Will I understand anything? And I tell you what, it was the most electric um, experience for me. I felt, I felt welcomed. I, I felt inspired. It was all the conversations that I'd been wanting in my previous work life. Suddenly they were happening in this conference. For me, EBVF has become or is a community and an organization of leaders that are rooted in values and faith, um, hope, and are committed to building, uh, to discussing and having meaningful conversations and building a, a better future together and within their own spheres of influence. I'm not in the process of building yet, I'm in the process of inquiry. And I think that's an incredibly important place to be. I, I think humanity has got a long history of repeating <laughs> mistakes and not learning from their own history. It is very important that we take time to learn. So yeah, I'm trying to learn where I best fit. I'm trying to learn the, the issues in the world and the, the opportunities in the world, how I can use my skills and my strengths one day to to be a part of that do i know where that's going to be no but i am deeply committed to then building later once i know <laughs> i don't have a, a particular vision of the future i think i think change is coming i believe change is coming it has to come because of you know the environment climate change I think we're going to experience very, very challenging times ahead that are going to test us. But I'm also excited by this because uncertainty for me, like I've said before, it's that paradox. It's deeply uncomfortable. It's deeply challenging, but it's also really exciting and it can bring so many things um, if we if we have the courage to take a step into it and to, to not ignore our feelings and who we are and what's happening in the world. If we take a step, I'm, I'm very hopeful. What it looks like, I don't know, but I, I'm excited. <laughs> I would tell myself to trust myself, that I will make mistakes. I will make many mistakes, but it's okay. And it's okay because you just have to learn why. You need to be curious, continue to be curious and to not know the answers, but to ask more. But you know, I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change any of the difficult moments I've had because it's also brought so many positive things in my life. So I would just say, continue to trust, continue on your journey. And these are all things I say to myself now, <laughs> not just younger Emily, but <laughs> Emily today too. <laughs>